Yes. Okay, so our couple of goals today would be to understand these formulas, uh, what it all means, what all this stuff means, and when we use them. Okay? Are those exclamation points? Yes, they are. Oh. They mean something different in math than they do in English. They would be nothing to do with being emphatic about anything. Those are nice words. Yeah. So this would be uh, P for permutation. Okay. I'm going to get out of the notebook, sit with your feet facing forward, all oh, that's good stuff, okay? Permutations, that would mean, like this is the, the meaning of the word permutations, unique orderings, okay? So if I were to, oh, I didn't spell that right. Uh, well, so this <laughs> would be, uh, a permutation of the letters in the word understand, okay? I have reordered them for some reason. This was not on purpose. But it should be understand, now it's understand. And it's uh, a permutation, a reordering, a unique ordering of those letters, okay? Another one would be the order that makes that word actually spelled correctly, all right? So a unique ordering, a permutation, uh, is taking a group of stuff and putting it in a different order. So we'll talk about that. Um, this thing, this means, what is this, what, what's the meaning of this thing? Or how do we read it? We read it factorial. We'll put that after a number. I'll explain what it actually means here a little bit. But if I put that after an n, it's n factorial. Put it after five, it's five factorial. Put it after seven, it's seven factorial. It'll always be a whole number. It'll never be negative. It'll never be a decimal. It'll always be one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, so on. Zero factorial. So a number can be a factorial, and we'll talk about what that means a little bit later. Okay? And this is used in instances when we want to talk about like what we're doing today is we're counting stuff. We're counting up how many ways can this happen, how many groups are there possible, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this would be when we're counting things that order matters. Order is important. Talk about that, what that means. Here, these are combinations, C for combinations. Okay. Unlike orderings, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Order does not matter. talk about what that means. What, is it, what do you mean that order matters or order does not matter? But it's certainly a good thing to write at the very beginning because order mattering or order not mattering is one of the highest uh, levels of, or, or occurrences of confusion, causes of confusion. Order is important or order is important. What, is it, what does it uh, mean? So we'll talk about that. Okay, so before we can talk about permutations, we kind of need to know what factorial means. Before we can talk about factorial, we need to kind of talk about the fundamental counting principle. Just something I'm pretty confident most of you are familiar with at some level. So let's get started with something like that. <clears throat> so the fundamental counting principle, we're gonna uh, display it by drawing a tree diagram. We don't have to draw tree diagrams forever, but it lets us see why the fundamental counting principle is the way it is. So there's a six-sided die and a quarter. Simple, start off simple two things. Okay. How many ways are there to first flip a, or to roll a die and then flip a, a quarter? Well, we could, um, we could get a one on the die, and then we could get a heads on the quarter, right? And we could get a one on the die and get a tails on the quarter. And we could get a two on the on the die and a heads on the quarter. Then we can get a two on the die and a tails on the quarter. You see where I'm going with this? That's how many ways, or we're starting to count how many ways there are. Okay? And for this example, that wouldn't be a very difficult thing to write out all of the possibilities. Has anybody already done that? Or anybody have a guess at how many possible outcomes there are? Six 
sides on a die. Two sides on a quarter. Okay, six times two. Okay, to help you see why it's six times two, I'm gonna use a tree diagram. Okay, here's you. This is you before you roll the die. Okay, you're about to roll the die. After you roll the die, how many different ways can that come out? Two. Six different ways. Roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Six different possibilities, six different realities. Okay, so let's say you roll a one, and you're about to do what after that? Flip a coin. Flip a coin. How many ways can that happen? Two. Two. Heads or tails? Well, let's say you flip the, uh, roll a two, and you're about to flip a coin. How many ways can that happen? Two. Heads or tails? So the ends of these branches, this one represents the one and the heads, one and tails, two and heads, two and tails three and heads, and we start to get the idea, and then we just want to count how many ends are there of all the branches. Well, there's six branches here on this tree. Each of these six branches has two branches coming off of that, so there's a total of 12, six times two. Right. You guys ever done that before? You multiply the count this many ways times this many ways. Well, that's the fundamental counting principle. You take the way, the, the number of ways that the first event can happen times the number of ways the second event can happen times the number of ways the third or fourth or fifth or sixth event can happen. And you get all the different combinations, all the different ways that this can happen. Okay, so let's change it up a little bit. So instead of just those two things, there's a six-sided die, a quarter, and a deck of cards. Okay, without shouting it out for everybody. Give everybody a, a chance to work individually, see if you can figure out how many ways there are to roll a die, flip a coin, and then pick a single card out of a deck of cards. How many cards are in a deck of cards? 52. 52, just in case you didn't know. 52. All right. Who's got how many ways, and, and how did you get it? 624. 624, how'd you get that? Multiply 52 times 6 times 2. 52 times 6 times 2. So we've got 6 ways that we can roll a die, times 2 ways we can flip a coin, times 52 ways that we can pick a card. Yeah, 624. These are the basis of the fundamental counting principle. Can someone, or two check marks, sum up what, the, what you feel like the fundamental counting principle is, like as a, a rule? What does the rule say in your own words, just from using it so far? It tells you the probability of doing each individual thing. We haven't gotten into probability yet. All right? We just counted, it helps you count the number of ways something can happen. How does it do that? Like, what does the fundamental counting principle tell you to do? To multiply them. To multiply them. To multiply, what is them? Each. Thing that you're doing, how many times, like how many different things can happen based on each one? Multiply the number of ways this can happen by the number of ways this can happen by the number of ways this can happen. Good. Uh, you know, if we asked a really rigorous mathematician to say it, it would probably sound a lot more mathy and confusing. But take the number of ways what the first thing can happen, times the number of ways the second thing can happen, times the number of ways the third thing can happen. So as we're trying to count all of this stuff up, I mean, as it goes into probability and, and this whole chapter, it helps to be able to think of something happens first, something happens second, something happens third, whatever, how many things, however many things happen uh, in a sequence. Does that make sense? First, second, third thing. Maybe only two things happen, maybe 12 things happen. You gotta kind of look at the situation and figure that out. Okay. So, fundamental counting principle. Now we can uh, do one more. Right. Just one more. And uh, somebody pointed out there's a lot of mistakes on here. These uh, megabytes would be very small. But they're not megabytes, they're gigabytes.
36. How'd you get it? Um, I took All right, so we're going to talk about permutations. Start out with a simple example. Permutations, another way to think of it is just putting stuff in a line, a line. Okay, so me a line, like if you're standing in line, it implies an order. Right? So it's first, second, third, fourth. And if you switch that order, that's different, right? And somebody comes first where they used to come, you know, second or third or fourth, whatever. So you put things in a line, meaning that there's order. Okay, order is important per with permutations, meaning that if I take the things A, B, and C, and I reorder them and put them C, B, A, or A, C, B, these are three different permutations, three different things. All right? So that's how order is important. So there are three people selected for a committee. There are three positions for them to be in. So there's, now there's three people and three positions. Okay? That's not going to be true even for till the end of today. We're going to want to do something a little different. So you take three people, you put them in three positions. How many ways are there to put three people into three positions for them to be president, vice president, and secretary? And try and remember, we just learned the fundamental counting principle. We can use the fundamental counting principle to count all of these ways. Nine. Nine? Why do you think nine? Three people, three positions? Yeah. Three okay. But for that to work, we need to think... What's the first thing that happened then? What, why the number three? What, what, what are, are the three people, possibilities? What are two people in the three spots? So uh -huh. we can go vice president, president, secretary. Mm -hmm. And then, like, so if you draw the three people, yeah. you do the three things. The three things. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Right, like okay, like a tree diagram. So you pick person A, person B, person C. And then you do three coming out. So I think it's 12 hours. You take three coming out, <coughs> like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you can have a P, a B, and an S. Okay. A P, a P, vice president, uh, secretary, like that. Uh, Sure was. Okay, so person A is president, so then it can either be like vice president, secretary, or BC, or CB. Okay, so let's let's redraw our, our tree diagram. So, uh, let's say the first thing that we do is pick a president, okay? So this first branch is picking a president. So let's say we pick A to be president. Okay, the next thing we do is pick a Vice president. vice president. So we can pick B to be vice president for C. We can't pick A again to be vice president, right? Yeah. Okay. And then this might seem kind of silly, but the last thing we do would be to pick a secretary, right? Yeah, and then we'll pick B. B. So if we pick A and then B, and then so who do we pick for secretary? C. C. So there's really only one choice there. Okay. If we pick A and then C, then our last choice would be. B. All right. Now we pick B for president. For vice president, we could pick A or C. Right. If we pick B and then A, then we could pick C for a secretary. And then if we pick B and then C, then we could pick A for secretary. If we pick C, then we could pick A or B for vice president. And then if we pick C and then A, then we have to pick B for secretary. And if we pick C and then B, then we have to pick uh, A. Secretary. So there are three possibilities for uh, president, right? Just like there were six possibilities for rolling a die. 
And then after that, there would be just two because now we've used one. So there's only two after that. And then after that, there's only one. Okay. So if we write little blanks like this, and then we just kind of label them as decisions that have to be made or the events that have to happen or whatever, we have to decide on a, a, a president, then a vice president, and a secretary. Or we could do it in any order we want, really, but it seems like doing it in that order makes sense. So how many choices do we have for president to start with? Three, anybody can be president. After that, we've already used a person, so we only have two. And after that, we only have one. Okay. What if there are five people? And five positions. Five, five factorial. Five factorial. Is that who said that? Five, five, five factorial. It would be, I don't know what those positions are. Let's say there's five people in a race, like running a race, and there's first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place. All right, second, third, third, fourth. That's first. Not first. Five factorial. First or fifth. So how many people could come in first? Five. 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 They haven't crossed the, the finish line yet. So five, four, four three, three, two, one. This is five factorial. This is three factorial. Factorial means what? What does factorial mean? Now that we've seen a couple of examples. Five factorial, well, it's not factored out. That's what we would use it for. But if I said do seven factorial, what would you think that meant that I wanted you to do? Six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay. So what does it mean to say factorial to a number? Start at that number and go down. Start at the, that number and go down, and then all those numbers, you take multiply. them and multiply them together. That's right. seven blocks, 12 cars, like whatever, the, there's these things, right? There's n things, and also n positions. So these won't always be the same number. We won't always take all of them and put them all in order in a line, okay? But when we take all of the things and we put them all in a row, like if we were to take, how many people are in here? You got 12 people here besides me today. If we were to put you all in a row, all 12 of you in a row, how would we figure out that? Just put you in a line, all the different ways we could put you in a line. 12, 11, right. And that would be 12 factorial, right? For the number of ways that we can put all the people in this room in a line, right? One of those permutations, orderings, would be tallest to shortest. One of them would be oldest to youngest. One of them would be youngest to oldest. One of them would be uh, fastest to slowest, like they, every possible order or ranking or whatever would be in this 12 factorial. And then a lot of random ones that don't seem to have any kind of order for any reason. But this would be the number of ways that we can put everybody in order. How big is this number, by the way? What is it? Six? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 479 million, 1,000, that's 600. That's a lot of ways. That's a lot of ways. Okay. Can I take the rest of the year? Huh? Can I take the rest of the year to figure out? Would it? Yeah. It's 
It all depends on how fast we can make can a unique order. Can we do it? No. Oh, come on. That's uh, real funny. I don't Very don't funny. This is standard. I wouldn't have guessed that a student would suggest a way to waste a bunch of time. Shocked. Okay, so if we have n things and n positions, the way that we order all of them is n factorial. All the 12 people in every possible ordering that 12 people can be put in, that's 12 factorial. Now it's going to be different if I say let's take 12 people and, and only take out three people at a time and order them. That's going to be a different thing. Okay? So I have 12 people to choose from and I want to take three of them and make them president, vice president and secretary or whatever. That's going to be a different number, right? You think that would be more or less? Wait, what? So if I said let's take these 12 people and not take all 12 of them and put them in a line, but I'll just take three of you, okay, and arrange those three all in a row in all the different ways. Okay, and then I'll put those three back, and then I'll take a different group of three, which could be like these two and then Misty. I'll take those three and put them in, all, in order in all the different ways that I can order them. I'll put them back, and I'll make another group of three. Do you think there'll be more of those? Or more just lines of 12 people? I think there's gonna be more with threes. In threes? Yeah. Okay, we'll but find that out. We'll find that think. out. But if we're taking all of them, and we're arranging all of them in a, in a line, or in some kind of a, a ranking of permutations, n factorial is the way to go, yeah? Wait, so if like, there's three groups of people, and pick groups of three, when they get put back, can they go up again with a different group of two, or? Yeah, the same person can be in several different groups, okay. as long as the three is different. Oh, okay. So oh. you think more? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll find out, we'll find out that in a minute. But first, I want to help you not take forever when you're calculating these things, okay? Like, what if instead of 12 people in this graph class, what if you had a full class? That'd be 30 people. How would we find out how many ways there are to order 30 people? 30 factorial, 30 times 29 times 28. Now, that's going to take a long time just to write it down. And then to put it in our calculator is going to take a while, right? That's why calculators know about factorial. And this is how you find factorial in your calculator. <laughs> so uh, first, let's, let's just double check and make sure that our calculator is doing this right. Okay, 12 factorial. 12, and then we hit the math button. You see the math button? It's below the alpha button. We go over to PRB because we are learning about probability here. We're, we're dipping our toes in probability right now. We go down there, you see factorial. There's the factorial command. So it knows what you mean. It knows 12 times 11 times so on, so on, so on, so on. Uh, should be, there should be a PRB somewhere on oh. it. Oh, shoot. Oh, I Just guess. a button. And then we hit enter. Yeah. It works out. Uh -huh. Just like the other told us earlier. Wow. Crazy. Oh, okay. Jeez, look, mine does a simple button. It really is. Oh, my goodness. Kona is insane. I'm insane. Oh, I got better. Shut up, I did better than Kevin. You figured out on those? No, second you're taking it. Are you doing pretty all right, so now let's say that there's 30 people in this class and we want to order them. We do what? 30 factorial. 30 factorial. 30. Uh, math. Go over to factorial. Hit enter. Whoa, what does that even mean? It's huge. So it means, uh, let's say, 2.65 times 2 times 10 to the 32. Oh, man. Okay, that's oh, man. 10 to the 32 is 1 with 32 zeros. So to multiply this number by a number that's 1 with 32 zeros, it means multiply, or move the decimal place over 32 times. We don't need to do that, but that is approximately 30 factorial. So that would be your answer, like writing it out like that? Just like this. We don't have to write it. If you write E32, I'll shred your paper. My own 
Uh, scientific oh, hatred. Okay, sure. mm. Not paying attention to the fact that E32 means times 10 to the 32. Okay, so what I want you to do, just to get familiar with this, this command, and also this function of the calculator, if I want to do something else, like, uh, well, no, I'm not going to, because then you wouldn't know, you're not going to practice for factorials. So just to practice for factorials, I want to see, you know, at some point, your calculator can't handle numbers that are too big or too small. Okay? What do you say about these numbers? As I, as I make this number bigger, what happens to the output? Uh, much bigger. Really fast. 32 is not that big a number, but 32 factorial has 32 decimal places. Right? It's crazy. And if I put in 31 factorial, like how much bigger is 31 factorial than 30 factorial? A lot, bitch. In fact, it's exactly 31 times, times bigger than 30 factorial, right? Yeah. Because 31 factorial is 30 factorial times 31. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Now, I just want you to find where your calculator breaks. What number oh. breaks the calculator when you do factorial? It'll say overflow. Mm. Okay. Now, just finding a number that makes it go overflow, that's not good enough. I want to find the breaking point. This number works, and this number bigger than that does not work. Just a way to give you an idea of how fast this function grows and also where the factorial is. Practice it over and over. Calculators in Spanish? I swear I put it in English, but now it's like. Okay, we'll probably fix that later. <laughs> Okay, so we have an idea of what factorial means, yes? Actually, yeah. we shouldn't have an idea, we should know exactly what factorial means. It means multiply by every number that comes before that, that number. number, okay? Next. Um, okay, so I said permutations, we're putting stuff in order, and now I'm saying well, there's a little more to it than that. This is the more to it. If we put some of the things, some stuff in a line. Not all of it, but some of it. Okay, here's an example of that. There's 30 runners in a race. We're only going to talk about the top three finishers. So how many ways are there for uh, three people to come in first, second, and third? So we don't care about the rest of the people. We don't care about the rest of the people at all. Okay? We don't care about those guys at all. If you wanted to find out how many ways can they all finish, would that be 30 factorial, right? 30 times 10. But that's too much. That's, we don't care about that. We don't care about all those other positions. Okay? Notice this is what I asked about earlier. What if we were to take 30 people, or whatever group of people, and take them out three at a time? That's what we're doing here, right? Taking out three at a time, those positions, we're not calling president, vice president, and secretary. We're calling them first, second, and third place in a race. Okay? So how many ways? You want to use a fundamental counting principle. Go ahead. So it's like 32 minus 28 and all that stuff? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Right? How many people come in first? 30. Right? Before anybody crosses the finish line, anybody's game could be any of the 30 people who come across the line first. <coughs> but after that, somebody has finished first, and so how many people are left to come in second? 29. 29. How many people are left to come in third? 28. And then we don't care about the rest of them, so we just don't consider all of that stuff. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why I was saying it makes it, it helps a lot to be able to say this happens first, and this, and then this. Okay? That's useful when you're talking about people finishing a race, using license plates, rolling dice, and flipping coins, and drawing cards doing all these things. If I can think of it as this happens, and then this happens, that helps out a lot, because then I can use the fundamental counting principle. Okay? So how many ways is that? 24,000. No. So if we think about it as a tree diagram, first we're going to see how many people can come in first place. So there's 30, 30 possibilities, right? So there's 30 branches, that's 30 outcomes. 
But then we need to pick a second place. So that's 29 people. Nine. And all of these would have their 29 branches coming off of them, right? So, so far we have 30 branches. Each of those 30 branches has 29 branches. So all together, we have a first and a second place that are 30 times 29. And after we pick a second place, we find out who's in third place. That's 28 possibilities. Every one of these has 28 possibilities branching off of them. 28, 28, 28, 28, and so on. And so we have these 30 times 29 times 28. And that's how many possibilities there are. And if we run on each of those branches, OK, Phil came in first. And then Susie came in second. And then Danny came in third. All right, well, that was one possibility. Phil could come in first. Uh, Danny could come in second. And Susie could come in third. Phil could come in first. Uh, Al could come in second. And uh, Bob. Sure, I mean, we have so many possibilities. We, this is just one of how many possibilities for first place. 30. 30. I would have to do that. Once I got done with, with Phil, I would have to go down to the next person. And oh, that's too much work. Okay. Well, this is just three of how many possibilities for second? Third, 29. 29. And this is just three of how many for third place? 28. 28. 28. So, uh, really, we haven't even explored the Phil Susie combination because we'd have to go through all the possibilities for third place. And then we'd have to go through all the possibilities for when Danny comes in second. So, all of them together would be 30 times 29. Um, can I make that chart? Let's see what we yeah, have. Like that that was a number. <laughs> so we have 12 people to choose from. There are four positions to be filled. How many ways can four of these 12 people be selected to fill these four positions? Okay, so think this happens first, this happens next, this happens next, this happens yeah. next, and then how many ways can the first thing, second thing, third thing? 11,800. I'm not asking for the final answer yet. Oh, shoot. We just do 12 permutation for okay. So in the previous example, there were three things that were going to happen. Somebody comes in first, then second, then third. How many things are going to happen here? Four. Somebody gets picked for president, picked for vice president, picked for treasurer, picked for secretary. President, vice president, uh, treasurer, secretary. So, how many choices do we have for president? Twelve. Twelve, and then for yeah. vice president. Eleven, and then, Ten. and then nine, and we multiply them all together. So, do you notice how we are? You know, if somebody were just watching us write this down and think, "Oh, they're doing factorial," and then we just stop, right? We ignore sum of the factorial. Does that make sense? It's like we're doing 12 factorial, but knocking off 8 through 1. Yeah? yeah? You get what I'm saying there? Understanding that is going to be part of understanding the formula well, the formula that I had at the beginning of the, of the lesson. So anyway, for, for this problem, that's pretty easy. We can multiply these four numbers together, right? Okay. We want a formula, though, right? Like, think about. Uh, when I said 30 factorial, that would take a lot, like quite a bit of time for us to multiply all that out. 30 times 29 times 28 times 30. So we made up this notation factorial, which the calculator knows how to do, and then it, it does that work for us. Okay, so we use that notation factorial to represent the calculation that goes on. We like formulas because if it's possible to make a formula, it saves us a lot of time. A lot of time. Uh, for an example like, okay, so that's different. So let's put in a blank page here. An example like, uh, say there are uh, 50 runners in a race, okay, and just to make it difficult enough so that you want a formula or to develop a formula, let's say we want to have, um, you know, how many ways are there to have the first? The top 20. What's up? Um, is that okay? 
handout or anything for what? what class? Class? for like what we're doing or anything? Not yet, just because people were missing and we just had to work in. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm not, I haven't missed anything yet. Not yet. Sounds great. You ready tomorrow though? Oh, I will be so ready tomorrow. Right. And I'm just gonna get no, sick as a dog. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully, we understand what we're looking for. We're looking for the, what, the number of ways we can find the, 20, the top 20 finishers. Okay. So using your experience from the previous two problems, how would you go about doing that? 50, 49, I don't even want to write this out because it's going to take too much work. Too much, too much time. If we can save time, we should. We sh we should. We would be smart. Okay. Well, first of all, what would we go down to? Down to 30. Down to 30, you think? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. All the way down to 30. Okay. So that means what you're saying is this is the 20th position, and this is the 19th position, 18, 17, and this is the. Or let, let's go the other way then. This is, this is say the first, second, third, fourth, and this is what? The 20th. Let's count from 30 to 50. Okay, 30, 31, 32. How many is that going to be? There, it's going to be 21. It's going to be 21 if we count 30, 31, 32, 32 all the way up to 50, right? Go to 30. So we go to 31. Okay. That's going to be the case every time because if I say, like, in a book, read pages 80 through 150, how many pages will you read? 80 through 150. 71. 71? So how'd you do that? You counted page 80, right? If you just do 130 minus 80, that just counts all the pages after 80, right? Yeah. Up to 130, but you gotta count 80. That's kind of the situation here. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's use our our noggins here. I want to multiply the numbers. 50, 49, 48, 47, all the way down to 31. Okay. Well, like we said in the previous one, starting at 50 and going down, 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 one by one, multiplying them all together, that sounds like you're doing what? Factorial. Sounds like factorial, right? Like 30 factorial. S or 50, sorry, 50 factorial. So it sounds like 50 factorial, except Minus not. Minus, I'll say we want to we get rid of stuff, right? But since factorial is multiplication, if we want to cancel stuff out, we don't subtract things, right? We divide things. Okay. We want to divide this. We want to divide out of this something that will, okay, so we're just kind of ignoring all this stuff. We're just thinking this is the numerator of a fraction. 50, 49, 48, 47, all right? So 50 factorial would then continue on 29, all the way down to three, two, one, right? Yeah. We want to cancel all of this. Oh, sorry, this is uh, 30, should be there. 30, 29, so what? We want to cancel all of this out with the denominator. What's that? 30 factorial. 30 factorial is exactly what this is. Right? This is 30 times every number that comes before it. That is 30 factorial. So we divide this by 30 factorial to cancel that out. this up there so you can see I'm going to put up a basically the same question with different numbers see if you can follow the example and say we have uh, wait so would your answer be 50 factorial over 30 factorial yeah. well you do it right? you put it in your calculator 50 factorial divided by 30 factorial whatever the number is okay. let's say we have um, 67 runners 
Okay. You see, anybody guess why I'm choosing 67 and why I'm going to going much bigger than that? So oh, yeah. 69 factorial is the biggest thing that our calculator can do. Okay, uh, 67 runners, I want the top uh, 23 finishers. Not finished people, just people who finish in race. Okay, so top 23 finishers. See if you can figure out how to use the factorial and cancel the stuff out that you don't want to have. Okay, so what, uh, what do we throw to our calculators to get it to figure this out for us? Oh. Y44 factorial. 67 minus 3, so you did 67 factorial over 67 minus 23, whatever that was, factorial. Right? Because if we take the 23 away from 67, that tells us what is all that, like how many positions at the end, at the bottom, do we want to cancel out of the first time? So we figure that that's 44. We're going to cancel out the bottom 44 from 44 all the way down to 1. We're going to cancel all of those out. So we want to only want 67, 66, 65, all the way down to 45. So we cancel out 44 all the way down to 1. Okay? And here's how we uh, come up with the formula. Let's say we have n runners. And we want to know about the top R finishers. What's that? What you got there? N over N factorial yeah. over uh -huh. whatever that is. This is that formula at the very beginning. We call this NPR. So this is what we would use if we're talking about permutations. That would be things being put in a specific, unique order. Okay. Can you give me some examples of when we would use permutations? When order is important. What kind of things would, would order be important? old examples that I've already given you? When we know what position we need to be filled in. There are positions that need to be filled. That's a good general statement. There's first, second, third place. There's president, vice president, secretary. There's uh, mm. unique ordering. Uh, just putting people in a line that's you know, a line for lunch. I mean, different ways are there for that to happen. Um, Anything where arranging them in a different way creates a new situation. Okay. Can you think of a way in which you could take a group of people, but then putting them in a different order doesn't make a difference? Um, that are only too much for your brains to stretch and invent. Yeah, and think. yeah I think you could do that for fun. <laughs> okay. So let's look at something where order is not an important part of the of the process. Order does not matter. Okay. Basically, where there are no positions, like like Missy said, order would mean there are positions. Not order or combinations would be there are no positions to be filled. It's just a group of people. Okay, so there's five people to choose from. How many ways are there to select three from a uh, for them to be in a flight? Okay, so I picked this because it's a disc golf reference, and I like disc golf. So a flight is a group of people that just play the course together. Okay, Ten. and it doesn't really matter what order they're picked. It's still the same group of people. They just go out and they play uh, together. Okay? Um, and it doesn't matter what order you pick them in. There's not a leader. There's not a, a good guy and a bad guy or whatever. It's just we've got five people. We're picking them uh, anyway, to, to, to pick three of them. Pick three of them. But we're going to understand that huh? in a while. There's pieces in there. Um, let's start by counting these three out of five in a way that the order is important. All right. So how 
do we do that? How do we count these three out of five people in a way that order is important? Then we'll cancel out the order part of it. How would you count them that? And, and that is. Well, yeah, I mean that's that, that's like a scenario we can create. But I just mean, if if that were the case, whatever order you, you're imposing on them, how many? How would we count how many ways there are? To put three out of the five people in a in a in a order, in per, all the possible permutations there are. It'd be really similar to there are five runners in a race, and we want to look at the top three finishers, right? Same exact situation. Five factorial. It's five factorial. So two factorial. Okay. What does that do? Let's remind ourselves what that does. That's five times four, times three, times two, times one, over, divide by two times one, right? So that, that cancels out the two and the one. That leaves five, pers five people to choose from for the first, four for the second, three for the third, yeah? Okay, so now, in doing that, if you think of this as like a computer, which kind of is, in doing that, it systematically is counting Every group, right? It takes every possible group of three, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They're in there. They're in this number right here. Five times four times three. But we're are we counting too much or too little? Mm -hmm. Too much, right? Because uh, let's say you, you take one group of three. Group A, B, C. Okay? But that is a combination. That is one unique combination, and that's all we care about. We want to count that one time, right? But, if we, like, we think of this as a computer, once this thing gets a hold of it, 5P3 is what we've done so far, when this 5P3 computer gets a hold of it, it, it gets this ABC, and it also orders ABC in every possible way that ABC can be ordered, right? It also does ACB, counts it. Uh, BCA, counts that. BAC, counts that. C A B counts that. C B A counts that. Is that it? Are those, is that all the ways that I can order those three things? No? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no? No. Well, how do I know for sure? How many ways are there to put three things in order? Three. No. Remember, it goes back to like the very first questions I asked. Take six. three things, put them in order. Three, two, one, right? Three times two times one is six. Six ways. So you can be sure these six are the only six, okay? But see, this is, this is not good. We don't like that, right? We only want to count basically like just A, B, C. We don't care about all these different orderings. We just say it's those three guys, A, B, and C, right? So this is counting this group too much. And if we go with A, B, and D, it does the same thing there, right? Counts that group too many times. How many times too many does it count it? It counts it five times too many, or like as a multiple, it counts it six times as much, right, as it should. Every unique group of people, it counts six different times. Does that make sense? Okay, we think of this as some kind of an entity or a person or a computer. It takes ABC and counts it six times. It takes ABD and counts it six times. It takes ABE and counts it six times. Okay? So the number that we get here is six times too big, right? Everybody get that? How do we arrive at that number six? Yeah? Put together. Rearrange, permute is the math we're doing. Those three things. Yeah. Every group of three gets permuted six different ways. So if this number which is what we have so far. Is six times too big? How can we get it to be not six times too big? Divide by six. Divide by really three factorial. Because that's the number of ways you can order those three things. So that fixes it. That fixes our problem. It was six times too big. It was counting every group of three six times. So we divide it by the number of ways you can arrange three things. Right? Canceling out that number that we get because of the order being important. Right? And if we look at 3 factorial, it's 3 times 2 times 1. 
This three cancels that three. This two can cancel with this four and leave a two. So it's five times two, which is 10. There's 10 out of the five people. 10 uh, is the, the most number of groups that we can put together of three. All right. Now, let's just change the numbers around and see if we can apply this thinking to a new situation. So let's change it to 23 people. And we're going to pick groups of uh, five which would be awful, it would be terrible to put together a group of five. It's just inconsiderate for everybody else on the, on the golf course to put a move to that. Groups of four at the most, but for a math problem, we can do that. So, as a math problem, let me know what you find. How many ways are there to just put them in groups, not in order, just groups. So when we bring in also this three factorial, we get five factorial over three factorial times two factorial, notice three plus two is five. That's always gonna work out, these numbers add to that. What we have here is five C three instead of five P three for combinations, not for mutations. All right. Also, do we have it figured out for 23 people showing up to go play disc golf and putting five per group? How'd you get that? Um, I put 23 factorial. Oh, sorry, 23 factorial. Over five factorial uh -huh. times 23 minus five factorial. Okay, 23 minus five is 18. This formula, uh, I think it's even maybe a little easier to do than the permutations formula because all you have to remember is those two numbers on the bottom add up to 23, and one of them is that number right there. Okay? The other one you have to remember, do I put 5 factorial down there or do I put 18 factorial for the permutations? To help you understand that, I just want to break this down again. Well, what is it we're doing? Okay? we got 23 people, we want to put 5 of them in a group. Okay? So, for that, let's just look at the 23 factorial and the 18 factorial. So that's 23 times uh, 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times all the numbers before that, okay? 18 and, and so on. Um, yeah. So, down here, this 18 factorial, that guy, this cancels out 18 and 17, 16, 15, 14, all the way down to one. That part right there leaves us with 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 times 19, which is the number of ways to take five people out of 23 and put them in order, but that's too much. We don't care about what order they go in, we just want to know how many groups there are. Well, how many, how many groups, how many redundant groups does that make? Well, it makes as many as however, t however many ways you can arrange five people. How many ways can you arrange five people? Let's so use our new vocabulary. How many ways can you arrange five people? Five In five factorial ways. So we divide by five factorial. That's going to cancel out all of the order that's uh, given by counting it this way. That gives us a number. It's a huge number. That number includes all the different ways you can arrange the five people in every group. So if we cancel that out by dividing by the number of ways you can arrange five people in a group, then we've canceled it all out. This is five times four times three times two times one. Five cancels with 20, that leaves four. Four cancels with four. Three can cancel with 21, leaving seven. Two can cancel with 22, leaving 11. So multiply 23 times 11 times seven times 19. Um, let's do 
one more. Um, let's use like a pretty classic example. It would be cards. You're picking stuff out of a group. Cards. Okay. So, um, how many uh, possibilities, or how many, let's just say, how many five card hands are possible? We're choosing some. How many are we choosing? Five. five. Out of how many? 52, because there's 52 in a deck of cards. Does order matter? Is it important when you get your cards? No. If, it, if you deal me a two, three, four, five, six uh, spades, it doesn't matter if you instead gave me six, five, four, three, two, because then I can just take them when I have them and put them in order however I want. So no, it doesn't matter what order they're dealt to me. So are we talking about combinations or permutations here? Combinations. We're talking about combinations. We're talking about we don't care about what the order is. So if we were write this with math symbols, we just combinations. Right? We just have like these few blanks. Something C, something else. What is it? Some, what something what? Or what C what? Uh, 52 C5. 52 C5. We're drawing out of 52. OK, so that left number will always be the bigger one. We're drawing out of 52 in a way that order doesn't matter, five of those 52 things. How do we calculate that? What would we type into the calculator? Uh, 52 uh, times the NCR or the. No. Uh, 52 factorial uh, over 52 minus 5 minus 5 factorial five. times 5 factorial. Four. 52 factorial over, what's 52 minus 5? 47 factorial times 5 factorial. Okay. If you use your calculator to do this, which I recommend doing, just make sure you put parentheses around the denominator. 52 uh, factorial divided by parentheses, 47 factorial times 5 factorial. So you have the 50 factor, 52 factorial, which would be all the ways that you would order 52 cards. Then we got divided by 47 factorial, which cancels out all the bottom 47 of that, just leaving all the ways you can order 5 out of 52 cards. And then we divide by 5 factorial, which cancels out all the orders of those 5 things. Enter. 2,598,960. That's a lot. That's a lot of different five card hands that you can make. Um, two other kinds of cards. So in this question, we're putting together everything, except for maybe permutations. This is a combination problem, right? It doesn't matter what order we get these in. So we are figuring out how many ways there are to put together 
uh, a hand that has three sixes and then two other cards. We're putting together combinations with the fundamental counting principle. Kind of coming full circle. Folding in on itself. So to count something like this, we need to see it as, as a, a sequence of events. Right? Like to put together this kind of hand, what needs to happen first? Get three sixes. The first thing that needs to happen, you get three sixes. Six, six. Okay. The next, this is just a, a blank spot, what needs to happen after you get three sixes? but not sixes. Okay. Is order important here? No, it's not important. That's something important to remember. So we're talking about combinations, not permutations. So first, let's count the number of ways to get three sixes. Number of ways to get three sixes. So I can get the six of hearts, and the six of clubs, and the six of diamonds, right? That's one way. And then, yeah, and so ignoring this part, just talking about the sixes, we could get three sixes, you know, let me just like leave one of the suits out, right? We got the six of diamonds, six of clubs, six of spades. Okay, now the six of uh, hearts, six of diamonds, six of clubs. We put together all the different combinations of three sixes. How do we count that? How do, how do we count all the different ways you can put three of the sixes together? How many sixes are there? There's four. four. If you didn't know that, there's four of every kind of card. Okay, one in each suit. Okay. What's that? Just guessing, 16? Nine times four. Where's the nine coming from? Where's 10 coming from? Because 1 through 10. Uh -huh. There's going to be, oh my god, don't listen to me. We just want to get, tired. it's tricky. We want to get three sixes. <laughs> you have an idea? Order doesn't matter. Right? No. So if you're going to leave one out each time, there are only going to be four options. There's a way to think of it. The, the, the choosing three is like not choosing one. Yeah. OK. So let's change it to two then. Two sixes and three others. How many ways are there to choose two sixes? Okay, one time. It's an easier way. We're choosing how many? Two out of how many? Four, there are only four sixes. Does order matter or not? No. It doesn't? There's four C2 ways to pick two sixes, right? Does that make sense? Then we want to pick th two, not sixes, two other cards. How many are we picking? Two out of how many? 50, no, 48. 48, because 48. there are 48 cards that are not sixes. Does it order matter? No combinations then. So there's this many ways to get two sixes. There's this many ways to get three other cards. Sorry, three other cards, not two. There's this many ways to get three cards that are not sixes. Okay, so this is the number of ways that this can happen. This is the number of ways that this can happen. What are we going to do with these two numbers? Add, uh, multiply. Multiply. Right? Here's one way to get two sixes, another way to get two sixes, another way to get two sixes, another way to get two sixes. Okay? Then after we get two sixes, then we get three other cards. Here's a way to get three other cards, here's a way to get three other cards. We get three other cards, however many way, ways that is. Right? If we could draw out this tree diagram, we would have that. That number would be whatever 4C2 comes out to be, times whatever 48C3 comes out to be. We multiply them both together, we get the total number of ways that we could get a hand like this. Alright, so how many ways is that? First of all, let me show you a faster way to calculate 4C2 and 48C2, whatever C whatever, whatever P whatever. So this is the 
this would be the formula for 52C, actually it could be for 52C47 or 52C5, okay, since they would come out to be the same thing. So 4C2 would be 4 factorial over 2 factorial by, times 2 factorial, this would be 48 factorial over 3 factorial times 45 factorial, or there's just, if you have 4, you go to math, right there where you're finding factorial, you'll find NCR. So this number will be the n. This number afterwards will be the r. So that's six, six different ways. Uh, let's see, then I'll just, you know, do this again. Uh, 48, c3, 17,296, times the six ways that there are three other cards, and you get over 102,000 ways. So that's how many ways we can get two sixes. So how many, are, how many ways are there to get a two of a kind? What's a two of a kind mean? A pair. A pair. So how many ways are there to get a pair then? Pair is just two of the same card, right? Yeah. And not that means like not three of the same kind of card. So here's how many ways to get a pair of sixes. How many different pairs are there? Oh, thirty. What's that? Twenty-six. There are thirteen different kinds of pairs, right? Pair of bases, pair of twos, pair of threes, pair of fours, pair of fives, so on. Twenty-six. So this is how many ways to get a pair of sixes. There are 13 different kinds of pairs available. So how many ways are there to get a pair, any kind of pair? This is how, how many ways you get a pair of sixes. What would we do with this number to figure out how many pairs there are? Or how many ways are to get a pair in a hand of five? How many pairs are possible? How many pairs are possible? 26. We do this times 13. This is how many ways there are to get just a pair of sixes. Isn't this also how many ways there are to get a pair of aces? Yes. A pair of twos? A pair of threes? Wouldn't this be the exact same calculation? Yeah. yeah. So you multiply this by 13, that's how many ways there are to get a pair. How many ways is that? Anybody do that real quick? One, three, four. One, three, four. One million three hundred and forty-nine thousand and eighty-eight. Okay, that is, I mean, kind of close to half of all the possible <laughs> hands, which means that pairs are pretty common, which means pairs aren't that big a deal. It means you're not going to win a hand of poker with a pair very often, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Be pushing your luck just a little. Okay. Um, so can we play poker for this class? <laughs> so that is permutations. permutations, combinations. If you want to use permutations, that would be an instance where order is important, where there's positions to be filled. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, so on place. Combinations would be where order is not important. There's no positions to fill. Any?